Hi class, so today this is our first pre-class worksheet. So what you'll be doing is watch this video and then you have this exact same worksheet and you'll be filling it out along with me. All right, so, and so if I go too fast, feel free to pause and work out problems. Feel free to rewind and rewatch something. So the topics we're gonna to talk about today are the XY plane and coordinate system, quadrants, plotting points, the distance formula, graphing an equation, and finding x and y intercepts. And so for each one of these, I'll have student learning outcomes. So these are the things you're looking forward um, throughout the lecture to really grasp and really understand. So these are the main ideas of the section. So make sure you understand these things. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to plot points in an xy plane using coordinate system. You will be able to determine the distance between two points on an xy plane using the distance formula and you will also be able to graph an equation on an xy plane and determine the x and y intercepts of the equation. Alright so let's get started. Let's start with this rectangular coordinate system and so this is the type of coordinate system we'll be using throughout the whole course or at least the first half the algebra part of this course. First, let's talk about the two main um, characteristics of the coordinate system. We have two axes here, one that is horizontal and one is vertical. All right, so we typically call this horizontal axis the x-axis. Right, so whenever we have x values, we're talking about values along this number line. And we also have a y-axis. And so when we talk about y values, we're talking about the values along this number line. They're both the same number line. One is just vertical and one is horizontal. And so that makes four different spaces here called quadrants. And the way we um, number the quadrants is counterclockwise. So this is quadrant one. So this is what we call the first quadrant. Then we have quadrant two. Quadrant three and quadrant four. All right, so when we have a point, so let's talk about one point. Let's say over here, we're gonna have a point and they look like x comma y. So let's say we have the point two comma one. All right, so the, ver the first value is always the x value. And the second value is always the y value. Okay, all right, so let's plot this point 2, 1, so that means first I'm going to look on the x-axis and find 2, it's right there, and then I want to look at the y-axis and find 1, so 1 is not listed, but we know that 1 is always between 0 and 2, so 1 would be right here, and we just want to find where these two meet. So this is the point 2, 1. Okay, so now let's actually do an example. So number one, we are going to plot and label the given points on this coordinate axis. All right, so we have the point two, negative three. So again, we're looking for a two on the x-axis, negative three on the y-axis. And this is our point. I can label it two, negative three, but also this point has a name. So I'm just gonna call it A. So this is point A. All right, point B, negative two, zero. So we're looking for negative two on the x-axis, zero on the y-axis, so that's right here. So this is our point B. So one thing I noticed, I didn't label my axes, so if you didn't remember from above, this is the x-axis and this one is the y-axis. Alright, and finally point C, 
is at x value negative 1, y value positive 2. So this is point C. So we have labeled and plotted the given points. All right, now let's move on to, and talk about the distance formula. So the distance formula is just a formula we use to determine the distance between two points. And so we're actually going to kind of build out the distance formula. So we're first going to label the points 1, 5, and 4, 9 on this graph. And then we're going to draw a line that represents the distance between those points and label that line D. First things first, let's start with the first piece of instructions. Label these two points. So I want to find 1, 5. And I also want to find 4, 6. Oh, sorry, 4, 9. Okay, so that was the first bit. Next, it says then draw a line representing the distance between the two points. So from here to here, we're just going to draw a straight line. And that is going to represent the distance between our two points. And we're going to label that line D. So I'm calling this D for distance. Okay. And so we're going to talk about how to determine the actual distance between these points by looking at components. So first, part A says determine the horizontal distance between our two points. All right, so horizontal distance, well, this is just the distance between our x values. So the distance between 1 and 4. So what do we use in math to find the distance? Subtraction. All right, so 1 minus 4. That gives us a negative 3, but question, when we're talking about distance, do we ever use negative values to say, oh, I'm going 5 miles down the road and back. I'm never going a negative distance. So how can we fix this to make sure we always get something positive? Well, we can just use the absolute value. So if we take the absolute value of the difference, we'll get the absolute value of negative 3 which is positive 3. So the horizontal distance between these two points, so horizontally, is 3. We can do the same with the vertical distance. So I'm actually going to switch colors here. Vertical distance, we're going to look at the distance between the y values, 5 and 9. So we can do the same thing. We could either do 5 minus 9 or 9 minus 5. It doesn't matter the order because we're going to take the absolute value. So it doesn't even matter which order we do it. So we have the absolute value of negative 4. So that means the distance between these two points using just the y-axis is 4. So question C says, how can we use the, these two values to determine the straight line distance of D between our two points? Well, first thing, I'm going to actually draw lines to represent these distances on our graph. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line between these two spaces here, between our two points. That'll represent our horizontal distance. All right, so the distance between 1 and 4 is 3. Also, vertical distance. Distance between 5 and 9 is 4. So let me go ahead and label these. Well, this looks like a shape. This is a triangle, right? Triangles are good because I think we all know how to find one of the sides of a triangle if one of them is missing. So we know two sides, three and four. We're missing the third side. So what do we use to help us find the sides, side lengths of a triangle? Well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. which says if we have side lengths a, b, and c, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we can use this to help us find the distance between our values, our two points. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's calculate the distance. We can do that using the Pythagorean theorem. 
right, so we'll have 3 squared plus 4 squared, and that should equal d squared for distance. All right, so we got 9 plus 16 is d squared. Add those two together. 25 is d squared. How do I solve for d? I just take the square root. So we get that the distance is actually 5. So I'm actually going to go back up to my picture. Distance is 5. Now let's actually talk about what we did and why this Pythagorean worked. Well, what was 3? Three? 3 was the horizontal distance and 4 was the vertical distance. Let me all do this. The way we did this was to find D, we took the horizontal distance and squared it. We also added it to the vertical distance and squared that. And that gives us d squared, so we have to take the square root of all of that. And so that will bring us to our distance formula. When we have two points, which they have a parenthesis here, x1, y1, and x2, x2, y2, all we have to do is take the square root of the horizontal distance, which is our y values, the distance between our y value squared plus the distance between our x, sorry, the distance between our x value squared plus the difference between our y value squared. And this is the distance formula, and this is the thing you'll have to remember. But if you don't, you can always just build it using the Pythagorean and you will get it correct.